So in today's video, we are going to show you how to prep your floor when you've got big holes like this and get it all set up so you can put in a vinyl floor. So here we are, we're working in our kitchen project and I've got a big issue. We had a structural wall that was right in the way of where we want to put our island. We were a little disappointed. We figured there'd be some mechanical and stuff, but it turned out to be structure. Now, in that wall, we had cold air return. We had two different heat runs. We had plumbing lines, water supply, venting. Oh my goodness. So we removed all of that. We built a box and tucked everything into this one corner, dropped the ceiling and rerouted everything upstairs again. But now we have this issue we got to deal with. And if you're in a situation where you've got holes in a the floor, then I'm going to show you how to solve that. Now, generally speaking, 5 8 plywood, even with the big hole in the floor, is still very strong right next to that hole. There's not much deflection. So depending on the type of flooring you're going to put in, you're going to want to tackle this in a couple of different ways. If you're going back with tile, you want to put in blocking underneath in this direction so that it'll transfer load and you won't have any deflection. If you're going to be installing hardwood, what you want to do is you want to put some backing in there and put the 5 8 plywood back in that hole just to create a flush surface. Hardwood you usually install opposite the direction of the joists, which are running this way. So if your hardwood's coming this way, you have nothing to nail to. So you want to create a nailing surface. That's all you need. You don't need structure, just a nailing surface. Now, if you're doing vinyl like us, we need to close this up, create a nice strong surface that doesn't deflect, and cover it with new sheet of plywood so that we have a nice smooth surface as well. Vinyl has a tendency to, over time, fill in all the dents and divots that are in the flooring. So we can't just run a new floor over top of it and say that's good enough. We got to make sure it's going to last a long, long time. So let's get into this. What I've done is I've pre-cut my block the size of between the joists underneath, okay? Now, if you don't have access to the ceiling underneath, then you have to work from above. This is how you're going to do it. First of all, you need something to hold on to this wood. So what we're going to do, just makes sense. We're going to put in a screw. Now I can hold on to this wood no matter what's going on. Wiggle it in here and then bring it up. Now you'll see that I have the ability to install this incorrectly if I'm not careful and have it rising too much out of the hole. So we want to try to sit this so that we're in contact with the plywood on both sides. Now what I want to do is I want to use this screw just to make contact to hold it in place. And it, I don't want to drive the head all the way in, okay? And the reason is this. Remember we showed you when we're framing lumber. When you're installing a screw on an angle, it pulls wood around and it'll adjust the height. Whoops. So we just want to make contact. Now that that screw is in both materials, this material won't move around. So now that I've got this thing where it's not going to be moving around, I'm going to hold that piece of block. Drive that screw in nice and tight. Pull that one out and we'll reuse it on the other side so it doesn't warp. You'll notice that the wood started to pull down. So we're going to tighten this up a little bit more. Nice and tight and then we'll drive the screw. Now we've got that set. I can take my little extra hand out and drive that one in. So I've got four holes in my floor. I did you a favor and I pre-cut my five inch plywood in advance so I don't have to waste your time. And we're just going to lay these blocks in the position. Now in this situation we don't have to worry about holes around the plywood. Now there's some significant gaps here. If I was installing hardwood I'd probably take some extra time square everything off and make this piece of wood a little bit more snug just so that there's always a wood surface there for nailing into. But because I'm going vinyl, really all I want to do is make sure that when I put my next piece of plywood on, it's going to go over that gap. It's not enough of a hole that it's going to cause it to warp. So we're just going to throw in a couple of screws just to hold it still. Now in this situation, gravity is your friend. So you just need a little bit of help so it's not moving around while you're cleaning. And that's really all we're doing. Making sure that when we clean this floor, these aren't moving around causing new debris. So 
So you can see the condition of this floor now. The holes are patched. We do have little round holes. Once again, those are not going to be an issue. When I put this plywood over top, there's enough strength there with the vinyl floor that they're not going to be denting, so I'm not going to worry about anything that's less than an inch, okay? So, the next thing to do in our preparation, and this is painstaking, depending on what kind of floor you removed, you're going to have a variety of different hardware. If it was a tile and there was a plywood screwed on, you're going to have screws to remove. They're going to be dent and broken and bent over. Real frustration. So, screws and nails you want to pry out. Don't try to use your drill. Because if the heads are bent, you're going to just wreck your bit. Get under there and pull out all your nails. Just go over your surface. You're going to find, if you had vinyl before, you're going to have these little staples. The best tool for that is this claw. It has this rocking motion and it'll pull anything out of anywhere. If they're buried but just the head sticking up, pound them down a little bit and get rid of them. All right. And once you've gone over your whole surface, and you think you've got them all, then you want to sweep. And the reason you're sweeping is to clean all the debris off the floor for another visual inspection, okay? So we're, my process that I use when I'm doing new flooring is I will always try to get all my stuff out of there, then I'm going to sweep, and then I'm going to get down on my hands and knees and use the vacuum. The reason I do that, so when I'm down here up close and personal, and I've got my face six inches from the floor, I'm vacuuming in a sweeping motion, it should be so clean. If there's anything else in that floor, I'm going to see it at this point. I don't want to start laying plywood and then running into problems and finding a nail then, because then you've got to take everything off, cut little holes, patch it up. Real frustrating. So, you know, the, the work in this kind of situation is in the preparation. All right. So just remember that the more prep you do, the, the less problems you're going to run into later. Just one quick tip when it comes time to cutting your plywood. Check the depth of your blade, all right? That's really deep, it's not necessary. After all, the material's only a quarter inch, just adjust your blade. Don't need to have a three inches of out extension there because you risk cutting the floor underneath and you risk heating up the blade and sending crap flying everywhere. Now this is not finished carpentry, this is rough cutting. We're adding drywall, we're adding baseboard, we're adding quarter round. I just gotta get close. So when you're measuring a cut like this, take your number, add an extra half an inch, give yourself a little room to play with. So when the plywood's going down, you always have to pay attention to two important things. One, how close do you have all your factory edges to your other factory edges? Remember, nothing's ever square. So we're gonna get this nice and tight. I want to get this side nice and tight. Yeah, now I'm doing that. There we go. I'm going to find that I'm a little out of square. And that's fine. There's a way to fix that later. I'm going to use a crown stapler here just to demonstrate. These uh, inch and a quarter U-shaped staple, okay? And this is really good for thin materials like this because Unlike a nail that just has the head holding it down, this has the, the arch of a crown holding it down. So, done. That'll hold this down. There are three layers on this wood, so it's going different ways with the grain. So crown staplers are great for this. Now, stitching the sides. Remember the rule of thumb here? You want to staple about every two inches. You'll see every time they come off the laminating machine in the factory, you always get a warp. Now when you put your plywood down, what you want to do is step on your warp, work from the middle and work your way out. Okay. Oh. Try to keep the hose behind you and start from one side of the material and then work your way through the other side. That way you're always smoothing it out and leveling it down as you go. Now, inside the body of the sheet of good, I like to go about every six inches square, and I just run it like this. All right. Now when you do that, 
you might find that the odd staple is sticking up. Give it a shot. Make sure everything's nice and flush. It also helps if your compressor's plugged in. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to fill these little gaps. Because we went in two different directions, it's really hard to keep everything square. Um, what we have here is just a floor patch product. There's a lot of different ones on the market. This is a pre-mixed product that's on the shelf at the local building store. That's kind of why I picked it up. It's great for homeowners. It's the $10 size. And there's enough in here to do the entire room because you don't need much. I have a gap here that's going from zero to hero up to almost a quarter inch, okay? It's a lightweight spackling. A lot like drywall, just bring it, fill it in off the side of the knife. Now this particular product says uh, wait four hours before you walk on it or sand it or anything else. Okay, so there we go. The hole is filled. This is designed for use on plywood or on concrete. So to whatever surface you're prepping, you can prep it with this. Four hours from now, if you want to, you've you find that you have an issue. Well, here's, a, here's a classic issue I'm gonna demonstrate actually. During the laminating process, there was a piece of wood that got on the, on the board in the factory, it shouldn't have been there. It got imprinted into the plywood. This is the kind of thing you really wanna take care of. I'll fill it and then you'll see it real easy. Right here. This is in the heavy traffic area. And that little dent, if you don't fill it, is gonna end up being a dent in your vinyl floor. So take care and look for things like that because that's the kind of thing that'll really wreck your day. Thanks for joining us today. That's everything you need to know so that you can take care of laying your own floors at home with anything that's vinyl, sheet goods or vinyl plank. Speaking of vinyl plank, we are gonna have another video with the vinyl plank installation. So we got all the tips and tricks and cutting tools for that and look forward to that. But listen, if you haven't subscribed to this channel before, um, just so you know, this is a channel that's made for homeowners, all right? So if you're looking for fixing up your house and you wanna get a professional result, then keep your eyes on this channel, check out our catalog. And if you are a subscriber to this channel, make sure you hit the like button. We'd love to get your feedback, comments and questions below. Remember, I answer every one of these comments. So give us your questions, bring us your troubles, we'll help you solve them. See you next time.